Hey there. This is the first video in a series of videos that I'm making describing my process for creating uh, models in Blender. So I'm going to take you soup to nuts, front to back, doing everything that I do, um, all the way from uh, references and planning, all the way through the end rendering, uh, scene creation, lighting, uh, texturing, UV layouts, all that stuff. So like I said, this is the first video, and all of my projects start off with some type of research and organization. It's important to be organized and to get a lot of your research material out of the way early, um, partially because it, it, well, it makes the project a lot easier to do. Uh, if you have all your re resources at your fingertips, then it makes the process faster because you're not spending a lot of time searching for stuff. And if you do a lot of your research to begin with, then you become familiar with your model before you even start you know, pushing and pulling vertexes. Uh, it gives you a, a heads up as to the shapes and, and the details that you need to, to incorporate in your model. So if you want to make models that are you know, detailed and accurate, you know, to get this kind of level of accuracy and detail, you need to do some research. Right? And the more you do before you start, better off you're going to be because you know details like this require I mean, it's a fair amount of research but the fact that we have the internet and a lot of other resources makes the uh, researching uh, not only quick but kind of fun and these techniques don't just apply to aircraft you can see that i do a lot of aircraft but you know cars spaceships other other types of vehicles uh, hard surface modeling in general is what this series is going to be about i'm going to talk about you know texturing uv layouts modeling techniques um, ways to create you know all kinds of details in your models to kind of bring them to life but like i said every project starts off with a bunch of reference material and research um, so where did I get my research? Uh, books are good. So some of these books, like the In Action and the Vanguard Osprey um, series, these are, if you do plastic models, you've probably seen these before. They generally have a bunch of history, some you know, uh, drawings in them, particularly some good orthographic drawings that you can use for your, your image planes. Um, some books like this, this is specifically done for armored vehicles. Some are more of a history book, like this B-17, that have more pictures that might be useful for markings and colorings. And then there's this kind of like larger academic books like this V-2 book, um, which is going to be more expensive, but it has a lot of the history, plus a lot of good um, original drawings and some other art on top of it that help you with your projects. You can also buy some books that are specific to a you know, particular object, uh, like this Junkers 88. Uh, comes with fantastic drawings in in, inside. It's got levels down, uh, details down to the rivets. Uh, the drawings are outstanding. There's three or four different scales. It even came with um, decals that you could you know, then use if you wanted to, if you wanted to do markings and stuff, use them for templates or marking. Really good book. And here's a close up of the book and the company that, that provides it. So I highly recommend it, these guys. If you have plastic models, plastic models are a great resource. Uh, one, you can hold them in your hand. You know, if, if they're in the box, you can sort of look at the individual pieces, but if, you're, if you've got them built and just sitting around, like these are models that I built a long time ago that I just never got around to throwing away. Um, I'll pick these things up. You can hold them in your hands. You can look at them. I can see how things fit together. For aircraft, having a model is an extra bonus because a lot of the drawings you find will not have uh, airfoil cross-sections. So that data is just not going to be available on a lot of drawings. But that data is really important if you want to make the airfoils the proper shape. So if I made this wing and I didn't have the proper airfoil section, then it wouldn't meet along the fuselage properly, and it would just it would look weird. If you had maybe a multi-engine aircraft, like a twin-engine bomber, and you had a nacelle here, and if the wing shape wasn't correct, then that nacelle, inter, you know, that nacelle intersection with the wing would look weird. You just never get it right. So what I sometimes do with these models, if I have them, is I'll create little templates from the wing. I'll make, make one at the root and maybe two or three more templates that follow the surface curvature of the wing, both top and bottom. I can trace them, I can scan them, and then I bring them into Blender as additional image planes to let me create the proper airfoil shape, which then makes the rest of the modeling a lot easier because I'm not guessing it, you know, where that thickness is along the wing. In addition to the models themselves, there's always the instructions that come with them. They come with, often have really nice orthographic drawings that give you lots of uh, details in addition to just the drawing. They give you markings, um, you know, camouflage information, that kind of stuff, stenciling. Uh, and then if you've got something like this German 88 that has lots of interior details, they often have pictures of sub-assemblies. So if you're doing something complicated like an 88 or, you know, field gun, being able to look at the, you know, the gun carriage as a sub-assembly before it gets put into this full thing here, um, it's going to make your modeling easier because you can, you know, this is easier to figure out what's going on than once it's, you know, behind the shield here. You can also just buy uh, plans on the on, online. So this is a, an example of a Newport plan that I bought from the Smithsonian Institute Air and Space Museum. It's large; it's you know almost over a meter across. And I bought several plans from the Smithsonian, and they've all been good. You know, all of them line up nicely. The details are correct. They're scaled properly. They give you some extra data usually on them, uh, as far as you know size and wingspans and stuff like that, to make some of your future modeling tasks easier. Uh, the only problem is they're quite large, and so they're too big to fit on a scanner. Because what we need to do is we need to convert this into a digital image that we can then import into Blender and use as backdrops. So what I do for that is I cut the plans up into pieces of paper that are you know, roughly 8.5 by 11, something that would fit on a scanner bed. I run them through my scanner, and then I bring them into Photoshop, and then I just reassemble them in Photoshop to create a, a virtual large image. Uh, and then, then I can break that up and put that into 
uh, Blender as image planes. So then you know, the next type of research that obviously occurs is on the internet. And there's lots of stuff on the internet. There are plans, there are pl sites that are drawn that have specifically four blueprints. Uh, for example, this drawingdatabase.com, uh, if you're familiar with it or not, uh, has just tons of plans and they're all free. Um, some of them are better than others. Some, you know, it's, you get what you pay for. And I can't vouch for the quality of all of them. Some of them, like this car, seem to be pretty good. Uh, sometimes the quality is not going to be particularly good. I would stay away from the ones that don't look like they're good because they're just going to cause you headaches in the long run. So, for example, let's say this wasn't a particularly good drawing. Um, when you were modeling, you might find out that the you know, this A column looked good from the side but doesn't quite line up in the top view, or maybe this hood line looks good from the side but doesn't quite match up with the front. You know, it really depends on how the drawings were, were made. Like I said, this one looks pretty good, um, but, you know, this one, you yeah, know, not so good. This is this is clearly not a particularly good drawing and probably want to stay away from something like this or at least not use it as a primary source. Now, it's really important to get the best drawings you possibly can. Um, like I said, these are free. There are also paid sites. So like Avialogs is a paid site and they have, you know, different plans. Um, you can join and I think there's like a, you know, kind of a look at it and see what it's like kind of thing, but you don't get the download. And then there's a yearly access where you get the download stuff and then, you know, bigger get a discount for more. Uh, the nice thing about these sites is that uh, they're original materials. So you're going to get original uh, engineering drawings, got original pilot's manuals, that kind of stuff. Uh, another similar site would be like Aircore Library. Similar idea. You become a member, you can download all kind, a whole full library of manuals and engineering drawings. So there's nothing better than original material. So if you want to pay some money to do that, um, certainly take advantage of these libraries. Uh, there are also museums online. So for example, the Deutsches Museum uh, is uh, an excellent online museum that has all kinds of technical drawings. The V2 rocket that I did, uh, these plans came almost exclusively from the Deutsches Museum. They have like a full set of V2 rocket plans. Amazing. Um, so a good place to go. Uh, you can either accept or decline their cookies, depending if you like German cookies or not. Uh, another place to go would be the Smithsonian Institute. So that Newport drawing that I showed you a few minutes ago, that came from the Smithsonian. And if you go to this website, and by the way, I'll, I'll put all these links in the description. Um, if you go to the drawings on paper prepared sets, and then you can see that there's this massive schedule of drawings that are available. And you know, the prices range from like a dollar to maybe 40 some dollars, depending on how big the drawings are. Most of them are pretty large. These are, these are inches. But you can see it's quite a long list. And if you're into air and space kinds of things, then uh, this might be a good place to get some good drawings. Like I said, I've, I've ordered from here before, and I've never been unhappy with anything that I got there. Um, another piece of software you probably want to download is PureRef. This is the software that I'm using in the background here. Um, it just lets you organize your pictures. You basically drag them from your uh, file folder and then just drop them onto here. And it lets you organize them, move them around, scale them, group them. And then if you have multiple monitors, you would just put this on one of your monitors. And then while you're working on you know, maybe like a landing gear or a wheel or something, um, you would just have this off on the side so you could have a, a nice set of reference pictures for that particular object. And then when you moved on to some other part of the model, you might rearrange or uh, repopulate your PureRef layout with something else that was more relevant to the part that you were then modeling. I think technically you can download it for free, but um, it's a really good tool and it's probably the right thing to do to send them a few bucks uh, to say thank you for creating such a nice tool. Uh, another thing you can look at is games. So I know they're games, so they're not 100% you know, realistic, but these people tend to have a lot of resources that uh, normal people don't as far as researching. And the models nowadays are pretty detailed. So if you went, say, on YouTube and look for like a War Thunder uh, demo video, one of the nice things about this is that you get to be in the cockpit and kind of look around. A lot of times they have like cockpit, cockpit uh, views. Uh, another thing is you get to see how things move, which is kind of a hard thing sometimes. So if you're not sure how, you know, how a, um, a flap moves or, or a canopy opens or something like that, um, in these videos, they often have those things animated. Um, so you can either take screenshots of it or just save the video off to the side so that when it comes time to, to create the linkages and the, and the uh, animation for it, then you have some kind of reference for it. So good stuff here, even though it's games. Another thing I uh, recommend is looking for the word walk around. So whatever your subject is, walk around. Now walk around is nothing more than someone going someplace and literally walking around an object and taking pictures of it from all kinds of directions. And they can either be just libraries of pictures or they can be YouTube videos. So here's an example of a bunch of pictures someone took uh, of, a, of a 109. And you know, there's gonna be all, there's gonna be many of these walk around. So if you just go from walk around to walk around to walk around, just download everything here you can, um, you're gonna get lots of really good reference material that uh, you just can't be beat. You know, these are you know, pictures of real things. Um, you can also see videos where you can have, often you'll have a curator at a museum walk around one of the objects at the museum. And the benefit to this is you get you know, additional views that you might not get here, but you also have the, the, um, the museum curator giving you information about the object, telling you how things work. Sometimes you might be lucky and they might open up a door or show how something moves, so you get you know, that extra, extra bit of information. So 
and then here I would just take screenshots of things. You know, anything I saw interesting as the video played, I pause it, take a screenshot of it, and then save it. So once you're done collecting your images, your blueprints and your photographs, the next thing to do is organize them. Organizing is really important. Um, one of the benefits of the internet is there's tons of information you can get out there. One of the downsides is there is tons of information you can get out there and you could spend a, not very much time at your computer and end up literally with hundreds if not thousands of pictures and, and plans. Um, and during your, your project, you don't want to spend your time scrolling through thousands of pictures and plans looking for stuff. So you really want to take a few minutes and organize things. Um, I break my drawings, my reference material into two folders. One is the drawings. So any of the blueprints that I find, I put into one folder. And then any of the pictures that I find, I put into other subfolders, kind of based on where they appear on the object. So I've got cockpit, front, gear, middle, wing, and rear. Uh, just so that when I'm looking for something, I don't have to spend my time scrolling through you know, hundreds, if not thousands of pictures. I know that I'm looking for landing gear. I can just look on the landing gear picture or folder, and I've got all that stuff there. Sometimes a picture qualifies to be in multiple folders, so don't be afraid to take the same picture and save it in multiple places. You know, for example, there might be a picture that is of the landing gear, but it also might include an interesting piece of the wing, in which case I would copy that picture between the two so that when I was working on the wing and looking in here, that picture would show up here. But if I was looking at doing work on the landing gear, you know, that picture would show up here. As far as the drawings go, like I said before, you want to have the best possible drawings you can find because good drawings will make your life much, much easier. You know, this, probably not particularly good drawing, it's kind of fuzzy. You know, compared to this, this is a really nice drawing, lots of good detail, very crisp. Um, this drawing here, uh, I've used this guy's drawings before for my F4 Phantom, and they were outstanding. He provided, you know, sections of the fuselage and the wing sections, and everything fit together really nicely. I didn't have to do a lot of fiddling to get the plane to look right. So this guy clearly spends a lot of time doing research and making things proper. If you can find drawings uh, of this quality, you know, keep them. They're, they're like gold. I highly recommend this guy's work. We've used it before. Um, but you're going to find other stuff around the internet. And so the idea is you find as many drawings as you can. So, you know, this, this drawing only has a limited amount of information, right? It's just got the profile, a wing root, and then some cross sections for the fuselage. Uh, but it doesn't give us any other information, like top or bottom. So you're going to have to find other drawings and just collect them. All right, so I've got all these drawings that I found. The next thing I do is I put all of those pictures into Photoshop. So here we have that drawing I just showed you in Photoshop. And I often I'll pick the best of the best. So this one I would consider the, my best picture. And then all of the other pictures that I import, so let's say I imported, you know, this one, I actually imported all of them into, into Photoshop, and they're all just layers here. I will then take all of the other pictures, cut out the side or the top or the front view, and then rescale it so that it overlays this master side view. So that at the end of this process, I have a whole bunch of layers in my Photoshop file where all the pictures are the same size. So for example, and then I group them by where they are on the, on the model. So here's you know, a bottom picture, and you can see that I've overlaid it on top of another picture. This one's the better of the two. If we zoom in, um, you'll often see the pictures don't always quite line up. Um, when that happens, sometimes it's because the quality of the picture is not quite right. Sometimes it's because maybe um, you're looking at different variants of the aircraft or the model. Um, but what you need to do is you need to say, okay, well, this is probably the better of the two images. If there's a difference between the two, I'm going to use this one. And just stick with that once you've made a decision to keep things consistent. So, you know, go through, and then you notice that all my images are centered in my, this is a square, right? So it's equal sides. And they're all centered in the middle, and they're all centered on top of each other, so that everything lines up. And there's some miscellaneous stuff. And then, of course, the the cross sections of the fuselage. But the important thing is to put everything so that everything lines up nicely on top of each other. So that when you bring it into Photoshop, or I'm sorry, when you bring it into Blender, you're gonna have an easier time of, of getting your image planes lined up because all the objects will be in the center of a square image plane empty that you bring in. That's my process for doing research and organization. The next step is import or exporting these layers from Photoshop into JPEGs uh, so that each one of these layers is its own file. You notice as I scroll through here, the layers all sit right on top of each other. You know, the plane appears in the same spot for each one of these. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to take these image planes, bring them into Blender, and then scale them and position them, and then set them up properly so that you can use them as, as a template for creating your 3D model. All right, and if that's something you're interested in, click on the end card, and it'll take you to the next episode of this tutorial. And uh, otherwise, I'll have another end card up that uh, will take you to the entire playlist for the tutorial series.